in every economy we have to take care of two important factors which is demand and supply because these are the factors which perform the major functions in the economy like production, consumption and so on. Now when we analyze demand and supply of commodities in an economy, we derive the equilibrium price and quantity of output. Cost is the most important factor which influences the supply of commodities. Since high cost reduces the profits of the producer, it is very very important to analyze the cost of a factor seriously. Now the theory of cost is very important in economics. There is no economics without the theory of costs. Now this theory has two versions. The traditional version which we shall be taking up in this module and the modern version which we shall be taking up in another module. In this module it is really the traditional theory of costs that we shall be looking at. Now when a producer wants to produce a commodity, he has to first decide upon the process of production and how much cost will be involved in it. Process of production involves a number of factors of production. Factors may be fixed, variable, the producer has to make payments to these factors for their services. These expenses that the producer has to incur for making payments, these are the costs of production, very important costs of production. This can be put into the form of a function, the cost function. The cost function shows the relationship between the firm's cost and its output. C is a function of QPT, where C is the cost Q is the level of output, P is the prices of inputs, T is the technology. So here we therefore have the cost function C function of QPT that says it all. Since the cost function combines the information given by the production function with the input prices, the cost functions are derived functions cost function is therefore dependent upon the production function. Again depending upon the time involved cost function can be short run or long run, long run costs, short run costs. Since they are derived functions any change in production will impact on the cost function and this is what we shall be taking up in this module. After studying this module, you will be able to know traditional theory of costs in both short run and long run, identify fixed cost, variable cost, opportunity cost, social cost, private cost, marginal cost, explicit and implicit cost. Derive different cost functions. Evaluate the difference between short run and long run costs under the traditional theory of costs. The process of production involves a number of factors of production. The factors may be fixed and variable. The producers make payments to these factors for their services. These expenses are known as the costs of production. The cost function shows the relationship between the firm's cost and its output. In the equation, it is shown that C is the function of output, price and technology. Let us now discuss different types of costs. Private costs refer to costs incurred on the purchase of inputs or the factors of production and also the implicit costs borne by the producers. Social costs are those costs which the producer does not include in his cost of production, for example, air pollution imposed by a chemical factory on society. Explicit costs refer to the costs incurred by a firm on the purchase of factors of production. Implicit costs refer to the costs that are associated with the factor inputs owned by the firm. Opportunity cost is the cost associated with the opportunities that have been foregone by not putting the firm's resources to the best possible uses. The process of production involves two types of costs, private costs and social costs. Private costs refer to costs incurred on the purchase of inputs 
or factors of production and also the implicit costs borne by the producers which can include the costs incurred on the factors of production, the costs which are imputed or implicit and so on as well as normal profits. Social costs are different from private costs. There are some costs which the producer does not include in its cost of production which are taken into account in welfare economics. For example, a chemical factory may cause pollution and affect the health of the population. So, the social cost of that production is this pollution and the impact on the population health. This social cost is relevant from the point of view of society and needs to be compensated. Another way to look at costs is whether they are explicit or implicit. Explicit cost refers to costs incurred by a firm on the purchase of factors of production such as raw materials, wages, interest payments, rent, etc. It is also known as money costs or accounting costs. Implicit costs refer to the costs that are associated with the factor inputs owned by the firm. These costs are also known as economic costs. The economist has a wider view of costs, we must remember, as compared to an accountant, since these costs do not involve monetary payments, accountant may not take them into account, but the economist has to take care of these imputed or implicit costs. An entrepreneur who runs his factory on his own land is foregoing the returns he could have got if he had rented it out at market rate. The entrepreneur can work as a manager or a consultant and earn wages. So these items, these aspects need to be taken into account in economics if not in accountancy. This brings us to the concept of opportunity costs. Opportunity costs are very, very crucial. Opportunity costs or alternative costs, they are the costs associated with the opportunities that the firm has foregone by not taking that particular best alternative which it was open for it to use. For example, a given amount of resources can produce 1000 kilograms of rice or 500 kilograms of sugar. The producer decides to produce one of the options, let us say 100 kilograms of rice. That means that 500 kgs of sugar, opportunity of earning money on it is foregone. So, this decision involves a loss of opportunity which is a cost element in the entire analysis. Let us first discuss the traditional theory of cost in the short run. Total fixed costs refer to the sum of all the expenditures by the firm on fixed inputs like land, depreciation of machinery, insurance, etc. The payments for such factors are fixed in the short run and independent of the level of output. Total variable costs refer to the firm's total expenditure on variable factors. Variable costs vary directly with the change in the level of output. TVC has an inverse S shape reflecting the law of variable proportions. Total cost is the actual cost incurred to produce a given level of output. In the short run, it is the sum of TFC and TVC. After understanding the concept of total cost curve, it is very important to understand per unit cost curve in the short run analysis of the firm. They are average fixed cost, it is per unit cost of the fixed factors of production, AFC equals TFC by Q. The AFC is a rectangular hyperbola because multiplication of AFC with the quantity of output produced always yields a fixed value. Average variable cost refers to the per unit cost of the variable factors of production. Average total cost 
is the sum of average fixed costs and average variable costs and marginal cost which is the addition to the total cost as a result of a unit increase in the output. Now we will turn to the relationship between average cost and average variable cost. As we have seen costs or total costs may have two components fixed as well as variable that is why AC may have two components average fixed costs and average variable costs. Average variable costs and average cost curves are generally recognized to be U-shaped. This is the purport or this is the proposition which the traditional theory of costs makes. The behavior of the AC curve depends on the behavior of the AVC and AFC curves. Both AFC average fixed costs and AVC average variable costs are initially falling leading to a fall in the total average cost or AC. The minimum point of AC occurs to the right of the minimum point of AVC. Please observe that it does not occur right above it. It occurs to the right of the minimum AVC. After reaching its minimum point, it starts rising. However, the average fixed cost continues to fall. The AC reaches its minimum point when the rate of fall of AFC is equal to the rate of rise of AVC. When the rate of rise in AVC becomes greater than the rate of fall in AFC, the AC starts rising. The vertical distance between AC and AVC is the AFC which continues to decline as the output increases. Now let's look at the whole thing in the long run which is a period of time of such length that all inputs are variable. There are no fixed inputs and therefore there is no fixed costs. The long run is conceived of as a planning horizon where all economic agents can plan ahead, choose different aspects and so it consists of all possible short run situations among which an economic agent may choose. In the long run, all factors of production are variable. All costs are variable costs. The firm can alter the size and scale of the plant to meet the changed market conditions. Therefore, long run cost functions are not identical with short run and in long run, we have long run average cost curve and long run marginal cost curve. Let us now understand how LAC curve is derived from SAC curves. The long run average cost curve or the LAC curve is the locus of points denoting the least cost of producing different levels of output in the long run. In the figure, we have measured average cost along the y-axis and output along the x-axis. If the firm decides to produce OQ1 level of output, then it will choose the plant size SHC2 and not SAC1. If the demand for the firm's output increases to OQ3, then the average cost starts increasing along the plant SAC2 and the firm decides to set up a larger plant size SAC3 to minimize its average costs of production in the long run. The notable point in the figure is that the long run average curve does not touch the short run average cost curves on their minimum points. In the phase of increasing returns to scale and decreasing cost, the LAC curve touches the SAC curves to the left of the minimum points of the SAC curves and in the phase of diminishing returns, it touches the SAC curves to their right. The LAC is therefore not the locus of lowest points of SAC curves. It is only at OQ4 level of output under constant returns to scale LAC is touching the minimum point of SAC4. The LAC curve is also known as the envelope curve as it envelops the short run cost curves. Let us now learn how we can derive the long run marginal cost 
which is the additional cost of producing an additional unit of output in the long run with the help of SAC SMC curves and the LAC curves. Firstly, we have to draw perpendiculars from the tangency points A, B and C which intersect the SMC curves at M1, M2 and M3. By joining the points M1, M2 and M3, we get the LRMC curve. The relationship between LAC and LRMC is the same as it exists between the short run average cost SAC and the SMC. LRMC lies below the LAC when LAC is falling and above it when LAC is rising. Thus, LAC and LRMC intersect when LAC is the minimum. Now the long run AC curve, it is U-shaped and why is it so? We are looking at that now. In the short run, the shape of the average cost curves essentially reflects the returns to a variable factor as determined by the law of variable proportions, which says that as increasing amounts of a variable factor are added to the fixed factor, then the initial stages, they yield increasing returns, but eventually at later stages, they yield diminishing returns. This is why per unit costs of production tends to fall initially and ultimately rise when diminishing returns to the variable factor sets in. Thus the shape of the short run AC curve is the shape of an U. The shape of the long run AC is however explained not by variable factor proportions but by the returns to scale which refer to changes in the scale of the operation of the firm and change therefore in the optimum cost of production. It comprises constant returns to scale when successive plants have the same optimum cost that is constant returns to scale. When the optimum cost increases with an increase in scale that is diminishing returns to scale. When the optimum cost decreases with an increase in scale that is increasing returns to scale. The term returns to scale signifies two things. First, the technical relationship between inputs and outputs. Secondly, the change in costs of production due to non-technical aspects also. All this manifests itself into economies and diseconomies of scale. The U-shape of the LAC curve is explained by the economies and diseconomies of scale. Economies mean lower per unit cost as output increases and diseconomies higher per unit as output increases. Now these economies can be internal economies and external economies. Internal economies arise on account of the expansion of the firm itself, maybe be due to specialization, choice of better inputs, choice of technology, supervisory economies and so on. Internal diseconomies arise from exhaustion, difficulties in management, lack of accountability and work culture and so on. In contrast, external economies arise from external factors and the firm has no direct role in it. They may arise due to expansion of technological knowledge, growth of ancillary industry, development of transport facilities, also on account of rise in wages, rise in input prices, pollution and so on. In case of constant returns to scale, the LAC curve is parallel to the x-axis that is it is horizontal. The LAC curve is upward sloping in case of diminishing returns to scale and in case of increasing returns to scale it is downward sloping. Thus the LAC curve is initially downward sloping parallel to the x-axis up to a point 
and then upward sloping again. The returns to scale determine the shape of the LSE given the external economies. To understand the shape of LSE, first of all we need to understand returns to scales. Returns to scale refers to the change in optimum cost of production when the scale of the plant is changed and comprises of increasing returns to scale when the optimum cost decreases with an increase in scale. This causes the LAC curve to decline initially. Constant returns to scale when the successive plants have the same optimum cost. In this case, as we increase output further for some time, the cost becomes unaffected by it and therefore the LAC curve is parallel to the x-axis. Diminishing returns to scale when the optimum cost increases with an increase in scale, LSE curve is upward sloping in this case. However, as output increases further because of diseconomies of scale, LSE curve starts rising. Therefore, the term returns to scale signifies two things. It reflects the technical relationship between inputs and output. It shows the changes in cost of production due to non-technical reasons also. Now we need to understand the concept of economies of scale. Economies means lower per unit cost as output increases. It can be internal and external. Internal economies arise on account of expansion by the firm itself and due to specialization. Benefits of large scale production, managerial and supervisory economies and so on. External economies arise from external factors and the firm has no role in it. External economies arises due to expansion of technical knowledge, growth of ancillary industry and so on. This economies is higher per unit cost as output increases. It can be of two types, internal and external. Internal diseconomies arise from exhaustion, difficulties in management, lack of accountability and work culture and so on. External diseconomies arise due to rise in wages, rise in input prices, pollution and so on. Let us compare cost curves in both the short run and long run. In both the period, the SAC and LAC curves are U-shaped with different reasons. The SAC declines first but eventually rises because of law of diminishing marginal utility. But in the long run, as output expands from very low level, Increasing returns to scale causes the LAC curve to decline initially, becomes constant because of constant returns to scale, and then rises as a result of diminishing returns to scale. Now, having understood the concept of traditional theory of cost, we will discuss its limitations. The traditional theory of costs assumes that each plant is designed to produce optimally a single level of output. Additional production will come at increasing costs. Further, according to the traditional theory, the firm can switch over to a larger plant size only in the long run and meet the demand at lower costs. Shall we now recapitulate, go over what we have learnt in this module? Firstly, the physical condition of production and resource prices jointly establish the cost of production which is very important to individual business firms and to the economy as a whole. Costs may be explicit as well as implicit, explicitly made to purchase factors and implicitly represented by the foregone alternative uses of the entrepreneur's time and money. Given the production function and factor costs, it is possible to derive total cost schedules that show minimum total cost at which each total unit can be produced. When all the factors can be varied, the resulting schedule is called the long run total cost schedule. When the time period is such that only a few factors of production can be varied, the resulting schedule is the short run cost schedule. In the short run, costs can be classified as fixed and variable costs. Given the total fixed costs and total variable costs, 
one can derive the average fixed cost, average variable cost and the marginal cost. The U shape of the short run cost curve that is first coming down then sloping upwards this is explained by the law of variable proportions which states that as we employ more and more of a variable factor with a certain given factor after a certain point the marginal productivity or additional productivity derived from each successive unit of factor will decline. However, in the long run everything is variable, there are no fixed costs. The long run average cost is an envelope curve covering all the short run average cost curves. The long run average cost curve represents the cost opportunities available to the entrepreneur before any actual plant has been built. So in this sense it is a planning device. The shape of the long run cost curve is explained through returns to scale, economies of scale and diseconomies of scale. Returns to scale and economies of scale are not identical in economics. What returns to scale represent and what economies of scale represent are distinct. The shape of the long run cost curve is explained through returns of scale, economies of scale and diseconomies of scale. And we find that returns to scale arises in the context of a firm's production function. It explains the behavior of the rate of increase in output or production relative to the associated increase in inputs or the factors of production in the long run. In the long run all factors of production are variable and subject to change due to a given increase in the size or scale. While economies of scale show the effect of an increase in the output level on unit cost, returns to scale arise in the context of a firm's production function and explains the behavior of the rate of increase in output or production relative to the associated increase in the inputs in the long run. In the long run all factors of production being variable and subject to change, economies of scale show the effect of an increase output level on unit costs, returns to scale thus focus only on the relation between input and output quantities. When there are constant returns to scale, the long run average cost curve will be a horizontal line. A decreasing long run average curve occurs when there are economies of scale and an increasing long run average curve reflects diseconomies of scale. Thus, the traditional theory of cost believes in a U-shaped short run and long run cost curves, while the law of variable proportions explains the U-shape in the short run, the laws of returns to scale explains the U-shape in the long run. Along with the occurrences of economies and diseconomies of scale, we find the U-shape is reflected in both long run and short run cost curves. Let us summarize what we have learned in this module. The traditional theory of cost believes in a U-shaped short run and long run cost curve. While law of variable proportions explains the U-shape in the short run, the laws of returns to scale explains the U-shape in the long run. Further, the long run also explains the occurrence of economies and diseconomies of scale.